come with us now, if you dare, down a rickety staircase into a dank, dark basement. What awaits the Saturday Night Freak Show? <laughs> Hey, thanks for listening to the Saturday Night Freak Show podcast, where a movie talk show podcast comes your way every Saturday, whether you're ready for it or not, in our quest for total world domination. Hey, you can help us out. Yes, you can help us out by going to wherever, oh, going over to wherever you found us and hitting that like or subscribe button. All of that stuff helps us become the fastest growing podcast in the universe. And in year 10, we will achieve that goal. That's right. Welcome yep. to year 10. We're, yep. we're on target. Yep. Uh, so these are the internet radio superstars. Sean. Michaela. And I'm Colin. Holly is on assignment yes. this mm-hmm. evening. Yep. And tonight we watched a movie that was chosen by... You! That's right. You! Every year we do this. We do our listeners choice month in January where we ask you in December... What movies you'd like us to cover? And so thank you very much, all of you, for uh, like, uh, it was like 100 movies or something like that that we got a submission for. And then stupidly, I deleted that because it was like, okay, you know, once I recorded them all, I'm okay. like, okay, we're going to delete that so nobody can pick any more. And now I can't tell you who suggested Phantasm 2. So well, God I, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. Tell us well, if it was you and we'll yeah. thank you next week. Write in yeah. and let us know. We'll discuss it in mailbag next yeah. week. But, Are we going to know who picked any of these? Well, uh, no. But oh, we, know, God, yeah. we know that you voted for them. So right, there you so go. Majority, yeah. okay. Thanks for picking it and thanks for voting. <laughs> right. Because uh, there's a connection here. Uh, with Phantasm 2. Mm-hmm. Michaela's been waiting to see this movie all of her yeah, I've life. I've never seen it. Yeah, I, I d- we did an episode on the first Phantasm, what, probably two years ago? Maybe. What is time? Right. We did what it at time? some point, um, and that's one of my favorite movies of all time, and I had never watched any of the sequels because... Which is surprising. Yeah. It, that you haven't ventured in. No, because like I got the perfect Phantasm okay. movie, right? So it's only downhill from You mean there. you didn't... There Wait. wasn't additional <laughs> shit to love in the movie we just watched i will get to it but i'm just like uh, i why ruin the bad experience yeah why take yeah. the chance of ruining exactly, the experience exactly with a sequel? especially because it's not like this franchise went on to have like 12 movies and 10 of them were good or whatever like there's five and i mean i haven't seen any of the sequels but i've, I've heard seen that, them all yeah uh, <laughs> i went on the phantasm road trip at one point i did them all i think like in a weekend and oh uh yeah Ravager? so uh, well, that one came many years later. Yeah. So, um, okay. So, what year was this one made? 1988. What That's year right. Was the first one made. 1979. Yeah, but it was directed by Don Coscarelli. That's right. Who also did Beastmaster, which we did on this show, and Bubba Hotep. That's which right. Which was also done on this done. show. Wait, well, I thought this was done did way did? back in the day. Holy shit! Like did we? way before me. Bubba Hotep. Yeah, I thought yeah, for oh, sure yeah. it was. It was okay. Well, I was not Don's been on the wall. Oh, I thought he. I thought he just was. We were putting him on the wall. So. I I thought for sure you guys did Bubba Hotep. I thought no. I, I know sure. I wasn't here for it, but I thought you guys did too. I don't think so. I don't think mm-hmm. we have. Well, yet. we'll have Bubba to. Do, we'll have to go back out. in our archives and find out. Might be one. So Don Coscarelli uh, is finally getting his place on the Saturday Night uh, Freak Show Wall of Fame. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, also, you know, this movie we're inducting a bunch of people. Awesome. Uh, Reggie also, Bannister probably. That's right. Reggie Ooh. Bannister has mm-hmm. finally made it to the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame because he was not only in the original Phantasm Wishmaster. That's right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Two out of three movies I brought. <laughs> He was a doc worker. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, he yeah. was in it for... Wait, no, I thought he was no, the, the pharmacist. pharmacist. Yeah, he's yeah, the yeah, pharmacist he's that yelled at Buck Flower. Yeah, that's right, yeah. yeah. Okay. In Wishmaster. Yeah. Okay. He has um, the same getup. He looks exactly right, the same. Right, that's why... Yeah. That's now I remember it, yeah. because I'm like, he was wearing the same similar mm-hmm. shit. Okay. Yeah. And uh, James Legro, who's mm-hmm. in this, is uh, also on the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame, because yes. he was a teenage cowboy in Near Dark. Oh, shit. Ah, okay. He was uh, also in Point Break. Oh, really? <laughs> Which okay, we also what? have covered. He was one Long of the... Long-haired gang member, probably. No, he was He was part of the surfer, uh, Patrick Swayze's uh, or Bodie's this guy, team. Uh-huh. We've talked about vapor actors. This guy's a vapor actor for me. Like, what I know I've seen him. What? Well, because you look James at his credits. Bro? You look at his credits and he's been in tons of stuff, but you, I have no memory of it. Like, I have no memory of seeing him in any of it. All I remember is Zodiac, because I was trying to place his face the entire time I was watching this. I'm like, well, I, I want to punch him just because he's got a punchable face to me yeah. but i'm just like 
Who is uh, Zodiac? Yeah, he. I think uh, this was prior to his breakout movie was he was in Drugstore Cowboy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, so he was like an indie actor in the 90s and then, you know, graduated up the... Now he does TV, a lot of TV. A lot of, any a TV lot show of, that's been on the past 20 years, he's been on a yeah. couple episodes of, basically. And I think with Justified or something, he was like in a multi-arc uh, yeah. appearances on that. But I mean, he's It's amazing. I've seen him stuff. in two things and he's been in so much. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we've also, uh, this is, uh, according to MF mad, the keeper of the Saturday night freak show wall of fame. Thank mm-hmm. you very much uh, for your service Thanks, and sir. duty, sir. Uh, Phil Fonda Carlo. Oh, little person Great actor name. is, uh, he was a uncredited dwarf in uh, phantasm right. two. You would recognize him if you saw him. He was a uh, bone bone car in Willow. Anybody? Uh, Will a big fan I of Willow? I have not Willow. seen Willow in yeah. 20 years. And he was Sir Nigel Pennyweight in Ghoulies 2, which we also <laughs> did an episode on Ghoulies 2. Wait, Nigel yeah. Pennyweight. <laughs> okay. okay, that's fine. Um, Don't remember that, but okay. So, uh, Phantasm 2. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I guess it is like, it's interesting that you didn't, you put off uh, wanting to see these movies, being such a big fan of mm-hmm. the original mm-hmm. so i am very curious by the time we get to the end of this like uh you know probably what your impression was of phantasm 2 because it goes a very different uh i mean it has a different tone different feel than the original movie right but i don't know where else you go with this story with the way the first one ended you know yeah uh, unless you're just literally making the same movie again i feel like you gotta move it out of that town right yeah <laughs> but it feels like he did have to make like a lot of the things that you remember about this, the first movie he had he does have to do again except yeah. this is the 80s and so he's got money because 10 I, times the budget of the original yeah because he got like three million mm-hmm. or something like that on this mm-hmm. one right yep. so why the gap between one and two just well he didn't he had no interest in making this okay. second one mm-hmm. uh but I, the only other movie that he'd made in that period of time was beastmaster and that mm-hmm. was right. 1982 cross Corelli's not like a really prolific filmmaker no and he hasn't yeah and he hasn't done a lot yeah mm-hmm. and i think we talked a lot about him on the beastmaster episode because yeah. mm-hmm. he was famously or infamously uh, he was the youngest person i think at 19 years old he sold a movie uh was it jim the world's greatest yep. universal <laughs> yep. no not jim the world's greatest again yep. but, yeah, yeah. kenny and company was after that, that. was after yep. that right, right. Yeah. Yep. and then phantasm mm-hmm. and then uh you know beastmaster he wanted that was like a big you know mm-hmm. expensive movie and then uh i think the way that i understand the story <clears throat> is uh universal pictures was kind of uh you know they were known as being the the studio that kind of created the horror movie mm-hmm. you know i mean for better or worse for their 1930s you know the dracula frankenstein all that the stuff. monsters yes mm-hmm. and in the 80s with the advent of um you know new makeup effects uh you know the friday the 13th movies and slasher movies and then all these fantasy horror movies became like the thing and universal is going like well, what the hell we we're losing out on this. We started this. So they started yeah. buying up sequel rights to Halloween two, for instance, right. or psycho two. And you know, mm-hmm. the, the remake of the thing we're like, we're going to get John Carpenter to work for us and all this stuff. And so they were trying to persuade Coscarelli to make a phantasm two. They were aware there was a cult, you know, interest in it. And I mean, so, that first movie made $22 million, which is surprising. That's a lot of fucking money for a movie that cost $300,000 to make. Yeah. I mean, a colossal independent movie mm-hmm. hit mm-hmm. Um, for being such a weird movie. Right. I right. Mean, but yeah. that's always the thing that like. It was you know, a big drive in movie. Big that makes sense. time drive in movie. Because I think people couldn't classify it. I think mm-hmm. that's, you know, this is like the 70s gave us, you know, movies like Eraserhead, mm-hmm. you know, and midnight movies like uh, Pink Flamingos mm-hmm. and. You know, uh, just weird out there kind of things. And so I think there was like an adventure to going to movies in the in the 70s. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get. Yeah. And this and, you know, Phantasm's kind of like a psychedelic. I mean, it's like a weird dream logic kind of, you know, they, they compare it to like a David Lynch, you know. Yeah. Well, even IMDb like classifies it as like sci fi fantasy horror. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was so, gonna say yeah. there's a few slashes before we get to the horror mm-hmm. in yeah. this description. Yeah, because it's mostly like it feels almost more science fiction by the time you get to the wrap up mm-hmm. of the original Phantasm. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of uh, you go back and watch Phantasm now. It's like they were reading Dune. Yes, uh, way before <laughs> they uh, all but say fear is the mind killer. They they tell them like don't be afraid. 
Yeah. And they basically do like switch around the words in that phrase. They're like, a here's bit a together. real killer, man. Yeah. Yeah. But don't they go to like the Dune Oasis uh, bar and yeah, you know, they just, do. Oh, like, yep. put your hand in the box, yep. what's in the box, mm-hmm. there's only fear in the box or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so Coscarelli. Which is surprising I like it considering how much Dune influence it has. <laughs> We're coming around to Dune. Yeah. 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 All um, things come back to well, Dune. Well, hence a, a philosophy maybe. Right. Uh, yeah. uh, that's shared with Dune. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, even Dune, I think, at that point was like a kind of a counterculture. It was like that in Lord of the Rings mm-hmm. and on the road or whatever. We're like right on college campuses everywhere. Right. Um, True. So he's given, you know, $3 million, mm-hmm. which I understand is the lowest that Universal paid for any of the other movies. But it was still, you know. <laughs> Ten times the original budget. Say, yeah. yeah. And that's $3 million in like 1987 money. So a lot more. So that than... means many more explosions. Right. Yeah. Thank goodness. Mm-hmm. I know, but like we, we like explosions around here, right? We do. Of course. Yeah. Oh, they no. I, my thank movie. goodness was uh, sincere. We got yeah. two of them in like the first 15 minutes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's how you know. Like, it's like we're going bigger and quote unquote better with our oh, yeah. sequel. Yeah. Start <laughs> off with an explosion. Mm-hmm. You can't get better. Like Michael Scott said, when you draw a gun, I mean, what tops a gun? <laughs> right. What tops an explosion in movies? Two more? Two more. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Mustard fingers. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you should always end your your movie with like a building on fire. Yeah. This one doesn't, unfortunately. <laughs> well, this guy, we had two building fires and a car fire, though. Yeah. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And many coffins on fire. Mm-hmm. Was, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But two, at least two big, like houses explode mm-hmm. in this movie. Yeah. Joel Silver always, would be proud, right? Yeah. Like, right. Yeah. He had to keep on ratcheting it up, you know. <laughs> Maybe um, Joel Silver walked by the set one day and was just like, more fire. I don't know what makes it better. I think it was just the thing he did in the 80s. Explosions. Well, Explosions and firepower. That's also like the thing that mm-hmm. like Don Coscarelli saw aliens, right? Don Coscarelli saw aliens. Well, I mean, Don Coscarelli saw Evil Dead 2. <laughs> Don Coscarelli saw Friday the 13th. I was going to say, to be fair, he's making this movie at the end of a really great decade of film. So yeah, there's a lot of influence of the past decade between these two movies. Yeah, yeah but it also kind of does show that like he didn't have like uh like a, a clear idea of what to do with like a sequel mm-hmm. you know because i think he said he was like phantasm was a one-off right you know? it's like that was a, a thing and then they wanted a sequel so he did it and then obviously there's a three a four and then later a five that he didn't direct but um mm-hmm. did produce um which i'm i will probably never watch that one just because he didn't re- direct it like well, come on you did four of them and then you're not gonna do the fifth one and yeah, plus the fifth one ravager is like it, it looks like one of them shot on video yeah. like very it contemporary movies yeah all i remember is a giant ball shooting up houses did that happen in that movie like did we get a oh yeah it like takes down cities up? i okay. think yeah yeah because there's like an alternate future at that point where oh. i think there's one reality where uh reggie and the tall man are patients and a uh, like a, a hospital, oh, and no. in the other reality, they're you know okay. adversaries on this like apocalyptic <laughs> battlefield, oh, with giant no. spheres, and all this stuff. Um, yeah, this series gets like just kind of like crazy. I mean, it starts in a really weird place. So where do you go from there? You just got to keep making it weirder, I guess, right? Yeah, and I guess that's also the thing that kind of makes Phantasm unique. Like nobody's come around. It doesn't seem like you know trying beating down the door, going like. We need a Phantasm remake. No. They remade everything happen. else. I mean, that's very true. They have remade everything else. I don't think you can get a handle on it. It is no. like this. I mean, that's, I think, if you go back and listen to our Phantasm episode, the reason that we all, I think, like, uh, recommended it so, yeah. was it's a unique movie. Mm-hmm. Good, bad. It's definitely like something that there's nothing else like it. No, you know? yeah. It's the purest true. form of indie filmmaking ever, too. That well, yeah. I mean, it's mm-hmm. uh, it's definitely very singular. Uh, mm-hmm. it and it's just fucking weird. But I guess that's the thing. I mean, does it make enough sense of, uh, that audiences buy into it? I think this is by the time you get to Phantasm Two, Universal is laying some ground rules. Yeah. Mm. There needs to be a three X structure here. <laughs> you know, yeah. we need. You know, we need to dial back the dream logic a little They're bit like, you know? this is them pulling the card in the demonstration room they whip it away and it says narrative yeah <laughs> yep yeah Step well, one. So, so how did he solve the problem of how do you follow up a uh uh you know a, a kind of abstract uh horror mo- horror science fiction movie well phantasm ended with the tall man coming through the mirror and grabbing mike yeah. so the, it had a, it had like a nightmare on elm street type cliffhanger ending but 
now the tall man's going town to town and collecting like all the bodies from all the mortuaries and graveyards across the country. Right. If he's doing it in one place, because we established in the first one that he is enslaving them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This I remember from the mm-hmm. first one. So it only makes sense. On like an, another planet. Yes. Mm-hmm. Where they have a planetary door that looks like a tuning fork. Yep. Yeah, whatever. yeah. Yep. Just vibro- it's yep. vibrating at that exact mm-hmm. pitch mm-hmm. to get you to another dimension, which are, are, are scientists trying this out? Like, yeah. Maybe, uh, maybe this is, maybe, maybe you know, Don Cascarelli is like an astrophysicist genius, you know, and has figured out how to create portals in time. I would know. How do you know that you're not living in the Hadron Collider like uh, I don't. I fucking don't. uh, Alternate universe. Yeah. (laughs) So, yeah. um, I'm going to get high and think about that later. Mm -hmm. There you go. It already happened. Mm -hmm. Right here we are. Um, Well, he he turns his clone. I don't know. I mean, (laughs) I I can't prove that you're actually here. Exactly. It's very true. None of the people listening can prove that we exist. We're just bits and bites on a... Okay. Uh, (laughs) Ones and zeros, man. (laughs) Well, he turns it into a road movie. I guess Mm -hmm. that's the thing. It has a linear plot progression. Mm -hmm. Um, But, uh, and I think this is to the chagrin of Phantasm diehard fans... They recast Mike. Yeah, I was. That was another reason I put off watching this movie. That felt disrespectful. <laughs> and you knew this going in. Yeah, I knew that they recast him. Because it's always something that gets brought up at conventions and stuff. Uh, always. But he comes back for the third. Yes. Fourth yes. One. This is yeah. James Legros <laughs> out after this. So right? why uh, do we know why he didn't? Uh, yeah. Come back? Well, if you're gonna make a movie for a big studio, they're going to Need say. Well, it, it, it's not even that because James Legros wasn't a star at that point. They just wanted. I think they wanted him to recast both Reggie and Mike, and he was able to say, well, you got to have Reggie, and made a strong enough case for Reggie, but he lost uh, the case for uh, Mike. Uh, His real name was Mike um, Baldwin. Mike Baldwin. Baldwin. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And I I don't know if he was like a currently working actor or in Mm -hmm. SAG or whatever. I'm sure you could, you know, get into Mm -hmm. the Screen Actors Guild, but he said that he even screen tested him for the role that he originated. (laughs) Got to to audition for your old job? That's bullshit. You know who else auditioned for this movie? I saw the trivia, but it was almost too ridiculous to believe. Is it true? It's true. What do you hear else? Brad Pitt. (laughs) Ah, for Mike? For Mike. Okay, so Brad Pitt. I want to jump into this parallel universe (laughs) where he did get cast as Mike and see what his career is like now. See, yeah, now that uh, Marvel has ruined me, because now I want multiverses of, like, where's the Brad Pitt phantasm, too? (laughs) Mm -hmm. Right? That would be amazing. We can go back and watch Cutting Class, the slasher movie with Brad Pitt that he did before uh, Mm -hmm. Thelma and Louise. Mm -hmm. We shall see. Thelma and Louise was his breakout movie, mm-hmm. but apparently he did audition because um, Brad Pitt told, or no, sorry, uh, somebody like met, uh, was it Brad Pitt, like Jennifer Aniston, or dated Jennifer Aniston, knew Jennifer Aniston, mm-hmm. and she said that Brad had auditioned for Phantasm, and Coscarelli's like, I don't remember this at all. And so he went back and got the audition tapes and went through them. And mm-hmm. sure enough, Brad Pitt like <laughs> came in. Wow, that's crazy. <laughs> I wonder if I could look it up online and see his audition tapes. I don't think he ever, I don't ever think he uploaded. Damn, Brad I want to see like, that. Don't. Don't do yeah. it. Yeah. So there you go. You almost had a Brad Pitt in the lead of Phantasm oh, 2. What would his career be like now? I yeah. know. I know. He might be like my favorite actor ever if that happened. If I lived in that <laughs> parallel universe, you know? Well, and this one, you got James LeGrow. What? He's the fine. Star of House. Fine. I don't know. Um, He's serviceable. He, um, I guess, uh, well, I mean, they said that, you know, like you can't have Mike Baldwin, but Mike Baldwin was able to, like when they made uh, Phantasm 3 and 4 and Ravager, they brought back Mike Baldwin and uh, Jody. Oh, yeah, that guy. What's his name? Is it like Jody Pearson? That doesn't sound right. Don't know. I'll, Jody, I'll look up Jody Thornbury. Brother? Bill Thornbury. Bill Thornbury. That's <laughs> there you go. Is, yes. Uh, he plays Jody. He plays mm-hmm. Jody. Right. The brother. Yeah. Yes. Comes back as a ghost. Ah. Yep. Oh, very Star Wars. <laughs> yep. Uh huh. This yeah. movie borrows from Star Wars. It borrows from a lot of things. Would, but would you be surprised to know that there are more silver spheres in the, in the third and the fourth no, one? No, no, I'm not. Do they just keep multiplying? There's yeah. a scene I remember where like they walk into a room and there's like a whole cloud of them like hanging up in the corner of a room. Um. And the fourth one is kind of interesting because he uses um, outtakes. 
from the first Phantasm because the first Phantasm wasn't. Didn't we talk about like he, he they shot that over like multi, many years yes. and stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. That took a while to do. Mm-hmm. So right. and they kind of made it in the editing room, mm-hmm. which is also kind of adds to its disjointed kind of. Yeah. Uh, you mm-hmm. know. Um, but so for the fourth movie, they went. He went back and found like all these outtake scenes that were not used, and used like a alternate timeline or flashbacks and stuff. Uh, so you actually get to see young Reggie, young Mike, young Jody in scenes you hadn't seen before. Okay. Um, okay. So so we're just gonna have to go with we got James Legro, mm-hmm. and he's in a mental institution at the beginning of this mm-hmm. movie because that's how you have to start these things out. Right. Yep. With your protagonist saying. Fine. I don't believe that this happened. Yeah. It never happened. I'm good now. It makes sense, though. This kid doesn't have any legal guardians or anything. You know, at the end of Phantasm, like, it's him and Reggie, but then he starts seeing the tall man again. So it makes sense that this would happen to this character, I think. But what I don't understand is he gets out of the institute. Okay. I'm saying I don't understand. And it's a Phantasm movie, so you're just going to have to ride with this. But (laughs) he meets Reggie, so he gets out of the institution. He's cured. Right. And he meets Reggie again. And while he's digging up graves, I'm like, look, no, no, there's no one in any of these graves. The tall man's been here. Uh, and Reggie's like, Mike, you're not talking about that tall man stuff again. Your therapist told you it was all in your mind. This is a Fright Night 2 situation. Mm-hmm. And it's like, Reggie, don't you remember? Like, you blew up your own goddamn house. You know? Mm-hmm. This is the exact <laughs> way these lines are delivered in the beginning of this movie as well. Yeah. A Ted. Dilted. Oh, it's a little. It's a little awkward getting back into this movie. Yeah, feels. I mean, just feels like just the way it's shot and set up. It feels very. I don't know. It feels very basic. It feels very like. What did we say a decade ago? Right. Oh, that's right. Okay, that's where we pick up where we left off ten years later. You know. Yeah. Yeah, because it it actually does start like right where the last movie. Yeah. Uh, concluded. Which I thought was really cool. I actually really liked that. Yeah, <laughs> with Reggie playing guitar by the fire. Yeah. yeah, it should be right. Yeah. And then he has to rescue Mike as, and then he ends up blowing up his own house. So mm-hmm. first of uh, two explosions and um, then the second explosion, because I didn't know that Reggie had like a wife and kids in the. Aunt yeah. Was what was that? And- I that came out of nowhere. Yeah, that was just like he, he's just telling a story. It's like, yeah, they baked a turkey and everything. And they're, they, we don't even meet these people and they're blown up and gone. Yeah. In the second explosion, which Mike force tells because Mike has been gifted with some kind of foresight of 30 seconds. Yeah. So what's going on here with Mike? Didn't they, didn't they lay the groundwork for this? And they were first one. I thought, wasn't there some parts of him and the fortune teller's daughter having psychic connections towards the end? Fortune teller's daughter. Jesus. I don't know. Yeah. yeah so just remember, I don't yeah. No, I mean, it the old goes fortune in and teller out. Who never he, talks. He went to the fortune teller. Remember? And then he stuck his hand in the box, just like Dune. Uh huh. Yeah. Remember? All she does is cackle. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Okay. The daughter yeah. does all the talking. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then Come they in. rescue them at the end, and yep. they're in the car, and mm-hmm. the car flips over. I remember that. Yep. It flips yeah. over, yeah. and then we get mm-hmm. the dwarves coming yeah. in, and yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but there's always been some kind of psychic connection we've yeah. established in yep. the Phantasm movies. Mm-hmm. Mike is somehow able to communicate with the tall man and vice versa. Yep. We don't know what makes that relationship so special that of all the humans on the planet Earth, somehow Mike shares this connection with the tall man. Mm-hmm. It's very Dracula. It's like the Shining. <laughs> yeah, that Dracula, yeah. It's very Tommy Jarvis. Mm-hmm. Yeah, mm-hmm. but it's never explained even in this movie. Nope. No, I mean, you know, when there's... This much mustard finger. Certain stuff you just gotta let go. There's more mustard finger? More mustard a finger. A lot of less, mustard not, finger. Not, there's less flies and bugs and stuff, which mm-hmm. I kind of missed. I forgot about from the first movie that we get that whole fly thing. Mm-hmm. And the little box. And the, yeah. <laughs> wow, what a weird movie. Mm-hmm. The mustard finger turned into the fly thing. It did. Yep. It did. Yeah, indeed. but this one, you got a parasite growing on the, or whatever, coming out of the back of... Uh, oh, this one's significantly more gross. <sighs> yeah. That, like, this, this movie cool. got gory as fuck compared to the first one. This is what feels like uh, Nightmare on Elm Street having a little influence mm-hmm. in this. Uh, even Hellraiser. Yeah. Like, this feels Hellraiser-ish, mm-hmm. too. Yeah. So, yeah, it really is, like, it's, it's still its own thing. Yes. Mm-hmm. But Very it much. really is, like, influenced by everything else around it. Right. Which I think, right. like, during this time in the 80s and a lot of stuff, I think it, it was happened a lot. not to, I feel I think like. so, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, I know that, like, directors do a lot of, like, tips of the hat to other filmmakers who were working during that time. I think that was what was kind of cool about the 80s. Like, yeah. you know, 
everybody was kind of paying homage to everybody yeah, else. Yeah, this is why Freddy's glove ends up in like Evil Dead yeah. one or two mm-hmm. at, at some point and stuff like that. Everyone's doing nods to each other and, you know, I think it was a bunch of, uh, it's a bunch of um, artists who, you know, probably felt a kinship with one another with these projects that kept coming out. Especially like you look at Sam Raimi. I mean, Sam Raimi's uh, kind of name dropped in this movie. Yeah. Considering he's uh, he, he's beaten to a pulp, actually, in his cameo in this movie. His yeah. bones are being ground up. So well, Reggie, yeah, we Reggie his... feels very Ash Williams in this movie and his vibe right? and the way yeah. he presents himself. And yeah, says, I'm not much. complaining, but it's noticeable. Right. Yeah, because he is, it is cool what they do with Reggie and the whole like uh, post Rambo, post aliens. He's Ripley. He's Ash. You know, they're trying to make like a, another one of those, yes. you know, mm-hmm. characters. Um, but there are, you know, like he, Coscarelli stealing shots from Evil Dead. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like there's some, it, the camera work is very, it, there's some, yes, like you said, very similar. Well, there's the, the ball crashing through the, the, the doors as they, the uh, James LeGrone and Liz are closing the doors. Bam. The, you know, mm-hmm. the cameras with the ball crashing fast, through fast them. Fast moves in. Uh, mm-hmm. turns. Um, I mean, even the, the handheld is a little bit like what's in Evil Dead. There's a lot of handheld in this movie. There's a character, was it a mort? Uh, he was like a mortician, a mortician's assistant, or whatever, one of the ghoulish undertakers. Uh, one of the twins? Yeah. That he gets a ball, one of the, the silver spheres, like burrows into his back and then up inside him. And that he's like slammed against the walls and all that stuff. And that felt very Evil Dead 2. Yeah. Evil Dead 2, yeah. Give me back my hand. Yeah. yeah. That whole scene. That's it. It's what it felt like. Yeah. yeah. So he's going for the comedy. There was a lot of comedy in this movie, but are we saying it was intentional? I think so. Based yeah. on Reggie's face, they're trying, yes. Yeah. For intentional comedy. Mm-hmm. Okay. It was pretty goofy at some It's goofy. Moments, yeah. There's a goofy moment where Mike real so he has so okay so Mike has a psychic connection with a lady named or sorry she's 19 years old we're told uh Liz Liz yeah right um who's well I'm trying to get to that scene where they're like it, laying in bed together and kind of <laughs> yeah yeah uh, and uh she starts talking to him in voiceover. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, <laughs> it's like The Shining. Yeah, and they're like shining back and forth smile to each on other. His face. Yeah. He's like, you can do it too. Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. Where it's like, is this like? Because it was fucking hilarious. Mm-hmm. His reactions, like your lips aren't moving. <laughs> yeah, and she's like, well, you can, you can do it too. Oh, cool. Mm-hmm. You know, it was just like, is yep. this supposed to be this funny? I don't know. Uh, I <laughs> or don't, that's an yeah. accident. <laughs> I know there is intentional comedy. I don't know that that was intentional. Right. But it's very funny. So the movie is going to basically uh, inspire the TV show Supernatural. That's what I have decided. Uh, You're 100% correct, It Chuck. is a direct uh, continuation. And how does it do that? Well, I mean, we've got the uh, the Hemikuda. We've mm-hmm. got a, a nice old muscle car in this. We've got two dudes running around with, uh, uh, you know, a trunk full of weaponry. Mm-hmm. Shotguns uh, specifically get yes. used on Supernatural a lot. Yeah. So, okay. yeah. I have never seen Supernatural, so I'm... But Sean, there's only 15 seasons. I, Why not? I could jump in at any point. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I don't know what I'm, I'm grasping here, but I think it, it feels like it fits. Like, and they're going around and they're trying to hunt down uh, supernatural beings mm-hmm. and send them to hell. Yeah, because you really do have that, like, uh, the... Yeah, I mean, especially because... And it's like a brotherly thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Don Cosgrelly should get, like, a character's and, buy or a story by credit. Yeah, credit yeah, like Aaron yeah. Kruger gets on screens now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a... Uh, um, an, yeah, we were saying before that there's a, they've upped the ante in, in the weaponry. So yes. and and so it also adds to like Homemade character weaponry. design. Yeah. So what are we what are we getting? What- oh, this is one of my favorite parts is the when they go to the store and and like it's like a scene in a video game where you go to your workbench and create your own custom weaponry. <laughs> That's basically what they do. So Mike gets like a three tank flamethrower with a welder's mask, which a little dorky, well, a little on the dorky side. But I mean, yeah, a little bit. Is it yeah. like a flamethrower? That the welder's helmet kind of just kills the, the look. flamethrower. Looks cool. Yeah, yeah, but it, it has that. I guess maybe. Yeah, it has that look. <laughs> it's like okay, if you got the other guy's doing his thing, this guy's in a welder's helmet. Yeah, and a flamethrower. Yeah, and then Reggie's got a four barrel, a quadruple shotgun. That's right. Take that, Ripley. Yeah, she <laughs> tied a flamethrower and a whatever the pulse rifle together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
but not Reggie. Yeah, and then he actually welded them together too. Yeah. Like the, I love this montage of them just like weldering and soldering and just making their shit. I love it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so, you know, we end up with a pointed four barreled shotgun. Mm-hmm. Yeah, why does he do that? I don't know. Because you're right. We needed a scene where he stabs somebody with that fucking thing. Yeah, and he stabs them and then shoots them and they go flying off. He could do that with a dwarf easily. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So well, I didn't understand why there was a point. It looks cooler. I'll mm-hmm. give him that. But mm-hmm. well, it's like his ash weapon, right? Because yes. Ash had the chainsaw on his hand, which yep. is damn cool. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot so of Reggie's chainsaws got, in this movie. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, that's right. We got a lot of chainsaws. A lot of chainsaws. And a chainsaw versus chainsaw fight. Yep. Mm-hmm. Uh, that takes place uh, in between one of the Undertakers and Reggie. Mm-hmm. And so I'm like, how many times have I seen that? Where you have like a guy with the chainsaw. We've like, seen hey. it a lot on this show. I'll tell yeah, you that. That's true. This has got to be the fourth or fifth time guy. we've seen it. Because like, it was. Texas Chainsaw 2. Motel yeah. Hell. Motel Hell. Motel Hell. Mandy. Yeah. I mean, mm-hmm. Mandy wasn't. Yeah, but we've seen it in Mandy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yep. We didn't do Mandy. Not here. Okay. So no, yeah, no. now even I'm losing track. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But we've seen it a lot in life. Yeah. Even. A lot of, a lot <laughs> yeah. of ch- <laughs> chainsaw <laughs> fights. Yes. Um, so this, uh, the quadruple barreled shotgun is never really put to, the, the whole time. It's so disappointing. It's set up for one gag it's, and the gag is good, the but gag is good. they could have kept it going. They could have kept that gag going. Yeah. Especially, like, I thought for sure they introduced this little tiny baby coffin that has a drop-down wall, and then three of the, the killer spheres come out. Mm. And I was like, okay, there's three of those, there's four barrels on the shotgun, so he's going to hit all three of those at once, and the fourth one's going to hit the tall man, and that's right. how this movie's going to end. Badass. No! It's <laughs> <laughs> not what happens. It's no. for four dwarves that are well, on the stairs. My question, did he only bring four shells? He's got a whole he's a got bandolero the, he's around He's got the him. two bandoleros on yeah, full of ammo. bandolero has, like, uh, it's got, drill bits. It's got drill bits and shotgun shells okay. on it. They're more he uses that drill way more than that shotgun, man. Yeah, I know. He does. I was kind of disappointed. Uh, well, I was very disappointed. Mike tells him when they're on their shopping spree at the because all the towns that they go to that the tall man has been to are like bombed out, you know, mm-hmm. post apocalyptic yeah, towns, boarded up. Yeah, we always know this because there's a rusted out car with like all the doors open that's been totally stripped down, like parked out and then plants of- growing in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think they passed a car that's similar to there. It's kind of like mm-hmm. you're next. Yeah, mm-hmm. and. uh so they go through this old uh, the thing, and we're like, okay, there's, this there's a hitchhiker at some point. Well, yeah, but the oh. the 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 weaponry is going to pay off in some in mm-hmm. some fashion that they're they're not going to be drilling holes in everybody or flamethrowing right. everybody. I don't know. Did Mike actually flamethrower anyone? I know at some point he flamethrowed a. a, a a fireplace to light it. To light yes. it. <laughs> that was great. It was. Wasn't that a cut too? Yes. That was yeah. which made it even better. Just like cut to. <laughs> and you think he's taken down something? And no, he was. Yeah. Did he the fireplace? Did he flamethrower? He Anybody? lit the building on fire. Yeah. yeah. And but I don't remember him flamethrowing everybody. There's no fire stunt with a guy. Say, like, yeah. yeah. We got yeah. we got budget for explosions, but like we can't really set anybody on fire. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah. And the uh, the quadruple barrel shotgun only comes into play, I think, in one scene, which it was designed for, I suppose, where Reggie's being attacked by four dwarves on yeah. a stairs, and he, with one shot, shoots all four of them. And we're mm-hmm. like, Woo-hoo. which is good. Yes. But then he literally throws the gun down and walks out of the room. Well, after that. Like, like every the- audience who sees this goes, oh, yeah. right. Yeah. yeah. It's like, well, I wanted more. Right. Yeah. Plus, uh, and he should be like he had a handle for it on the front. Now I know this is a uh, what should we call it? Um, it's not a pump shotgun, mm-hmm. but next time he should have like four pump. Yeah, that, <laughs> that would be good. Well, it seems to me in the other movies he does come out with even more like outlandish weaponry. Does he? Mm-hmm. I, yeah. Okay. I mean so that becomes like trend. a thing. Yeah. Okay. And Reggie basically, I think, is elevated to like the main. You know, does the ice cream the... truck come back at all? I was sad it wasn't in this one. It, it does in those flashbacks right. in the in the. Fourth one. Um, they should just be driving the ice cream truck around instead. Yeah, of right. Hemi. That's yeah. a good vehicle. Yeah. What, yeah. what instead of the Hemi? Yeah, because I mean, if you really want to be, I mean, I guess it's not covert. But I was like, if you see, <laughs> it, it's covert. not covert. But like, right. if you I see mean, an ice cream truck, you're not gonna like think about it the same way. You see a Hemi Cuda coming down, you're gonna look. You know? Yeah. Well, that's very true. Plus, like we said, like it's a very sneaky Hemi Cuda. I don't <laughs> think. The sneakiness level, I think, is the same because that uh, ice cream sound would just be going off all the time. Right. Yeah. I have a feeling. 
It, yeah. it was just such a part of his identity in the first movie, and then in this one, it's not even referenced. It's like you couldn't even have him in the outfit for a scene or something. Well, they do reference that he's you used to be an ice cream. Yeah. You're a forty-seven you're a year old yeah, middle aged ice cream vendor. I'm a nineteen year old kid. What are we doing? Just like it's not a good time to have a crisis of confidence, sir. right? Yeah. Uh, this is the only guardian you have left in your life, also. So maybe you know, come some slack. This is some drama in the middle of mm-hmm. our movie. Family drama. Um, the Hemi Cuda mm-hmm. is. I think synonymous with the Phantasm movies. It's one of like the most famous mm-hmm. like movie cars. It's synonymous with Nash Bridges. Is it? <laughs> well, he drives a Hemi Cuda. <laughs> Does he really? Oh yeah. One of like <laughs> where there's like they only made twenty five of them. So Yeah. I didn't know you were such a Nash Bridges I, expert. Show. I am forced to watch it. <laughs> okay. But I have that seen a lot sense. of it. But there is like, I mean, car people kind of go nuts for that yeah. car. Oh, yeah. Because mm-hmm. the way I understood it, because I'm like, what the hell is the Hemi Cuda? Because there was the Plymouth Barracuda, mm-hmm. but for like only three Ooh, years or something like off. that, they yes. made the, like you could get them with these crazy, you know, engines in them. And I think the V8 Hemi was like 470 horsepower, you know, like yeah. could take you to the moon. That's why you're like, yeah, the sneaky Hemi. And like, you can't be sneaky in that <laughs> no. car. I like that it sneaks up because that feels like an Evil Dead thing too, doesn't it? Like the Evil Dead car yeah. seems like it yeah. would sneak up on somebody. I wish you know? there was a switch he would have flipped that just like, psh, Hemi could it down. Well, <laughs> sneak I, mode. Yeah, sne- yeah, really just labeled like that. Like, yeah, psh. switches on the dash. That he Stealth can, mode. Yep. Well, the thing I was trying to confirm but couldn't uh, on the Joe Bob Briggs uh, last driving show when he did uh, Phantasm 3, they were talking about. So he had talked with a, a Hemi collector okay. who said, and this is why I can't confirm it, that the Hemi, the 71 Hemi Cuda that you see doing the, the stunt in this movie and landing on its top was destroyed, uh, was a real Hemi Cuda, of which there were like 13 yeah, <laughs> made yeah. that year. Yeah, a lot. <laughs> right. Now, but I, when I looked, it said there were three used in the movie, three actual Hemis, and then there were other that were, uh, you know, stunt faked Hemis up to, that yeah, yeah. To, yeah. to be destroyed. So that was a fake one. So uh, apparently, I haven't listened to the commentary track with Don Coscarelli uh, off the, the Blu-ray, but he doesn't mention... You know that we destroyed a, a yeah. an actual Hemi Cuda. <laughs> Did they do that in the first one too? The first one, it's not actually a Hemi Cuda. This okay. is the other thing. That's what's right because we've seen a movie before where like they destroyed a Hemi Cuda. Well, I was having flashbacks to Christine when they actually yeah. legitimately destroyed they that did, car, right? yeah. and it's hard. It is the it is a torture theory. porn movie for cars. <laughs> it is hard to watch. Yeah, like because I think there was like twenty. Did we say there was twenty five? Uh, mm-hmm. Plymouth Furies mm-hmm. in Christine, several a, a number of which were just st- annihilated, <laughs> just yeah. destroyed. That one scene where they take the baseball bats and knives to the seats and everything. God, that's hard to watch. <laughs> yeah. yeah, there was audible gas. Yeah. Like, no, yeah. don't do it. But in the, I guess in the first Phantasm, they it was a you know, it wasn't the seventy one. Mm-hmm. They had faked it to make it look like an older model and mm-hmm. you know Good put the them. trims yeah. on it and all that stuff. You go to any horror convention where there's a Phantasm person. A third to a half the people in line are going to be holding the Phantasm Hemi Cuda collectible mm, car nice. and get that signed. That's like what all the diehards have. And there's yeah. not, those are even really hard to come by now. I know. I think that yeah. car goes for like millions of dollars. Mm-hmm. Oh, you know, I'm it's sure. Like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, street legal at 470 horsepower. <laughs> um, <laughs> That'd be cool to have that little Hemi Cuda signed by. Yeah. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. yeah. And I saw like a car show that Don Coscarelli did with the Hemi. Mm-hmm. Um, Okay, but the other thing, so aside from the Hemi Cuda. I mean, I paid this summer to meet the station wagon from Halloween. Uh, <laughs> so I'll pay to meet the, I'll pay well, a lot you, of money to see. You shake hands with the door and it's like, well, it's finally. No, nice I to just meet stood you. next to it and they took me, a, they took a picture with me and Nick Castle. They're with like, it, don't so. touch it. And well, yeah, they really were because the first day of the convention, they were allowing people to sit in the driver's seat and take a picture. Who fucked it up? That lasted one day, Who and they took that up? away. And so somebody, I'm like, yep, someone spilled, spilled yeah, or oh, something. No. So if I would have gone the first day, I could have sat in it. But since I went later in the weekend, I missed ruined my it chance. for everybody. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Did you ever see that episode of Jay Leno's Garage with Charlie Sheen? Oh, no. Drives the turbo you said, interceptor. I was like, I can't say I've ever seen race. any episode of Jay Leno's Garage. So that exists. He yeah. does an episode on it's the episode on cult cars, and Charlie Sheen gets he gets Charlie Sheen back in a turbo interceptor, uh-huh. the Dodge turbo interceptor from the Wraith. <laughs> well, fuck. Well, now I need to watch this episode. Yeah. <laughs> Shit, I had no idea. How oh, are yeah. you going to drop that on me right now? <laughs> yeah. All right, fine. That's um, what Sean and I are going to watch when we go home yeah. today. 
Well, it there's great. Yeah. There's also iconic. Uh, there's well, there's two. There's obviously the tall man and the silver sphere, mm-hmm. yes, which we all remember from the first uh, Phantasm. That's movie. the most memorable scene of that first movie by it far. Is. Why? Because how many times do you see shit like that? You see a sphere flying at someone's head and then drilling into it. And then they piss themselves when they die, too. Everyone forgets about that. Phantasm, you see that guy piss himself when that he dies. That is true. I forgot about Does that. Does he or is that his yellow blood? No, he has no. Like red blood coming he, flying out yeah, of it. No, yeah, no, you see, like, there's a shot where Michael Baldwin's, like, sitting with his back up against the wall, like, scared looking at the legs of the guy. And you just see the stream of piss come down the floor. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Mm-hmm. But this is, uh... This sphere, man. Like, it digs into you, it drills into you. These ones have upgrades. It, and then it squirts everything out. Yeah, what was the upgrade on this one? It's got this a little one, buzzsaw on the end of it. It was, like, double-ended, and one was just the prongs that we know, that, and then the drill, but the other one was, like, yeah, like a little circular saw little that just, like, yeah, would That trip. buzzed off the pre-sear, which yeah. is cool. <laughs> God, that was gross. Like, that that would really fucking hurt, right? It would. Oh. But then the other one, because there's, there's, there's three, one of them, of course, is the gold one. That's the like, boss one. Right, is yeah. it? Yeah. I mean, that's Boss what you Yeah. Because it has a fucking laser. That, so, <laughs> yeah, it's all of them are like they can do other shit. They've got mm-hmm. rotary saw blades oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. come out of them so they can tunnel into people or through, mm-hmm. they can burn their way through doors. Uh, so I, I guess it's just cool. Yeah, the it is cool. Sphere. It is cool. <laughs> I like it. Been like, I'm curious to see what other upgrades it has over the movies if yeah. if it does. They, they keep on upgrading them. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What else do they do? I can't remember. I just can, remember them. apparently can take down buildings at some point. Sean, True. So. Yeah, but that's the giant. I remember yeah. there being more and more of them. I like a swarm. Re- yeah, they're, they're I imagine swarms. they're like piranha. If they swarmed around a yeah. person. They'd be yeah, like, yeah, a skeleton yeah, yeah, yeah. would come yeah, out. Yeah, Although now I'm just thinking of critters. But yeah, yeah. Um, they move as like a unit. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's that's back. But I mean, basically, we're getting this. It's the same scenes that you saw in that it first is. one, just repeated. I mean, not repeated like too much, but. You get several of like somebody running down a hallway, right? And we're the in thing- a mausoleum, or we're in a uh, yeah, what should we call it? An uglier mausoleum than it the is. first one. The other one was like a nice white and gray marble, and this that's what a- made it so scary is that it was so like like an Apple store, so stark and sleek, you know. And, <laughs> and then, blood yeah, shovel. this is more of a and yellow blood, too. Yeah, mustard blood, mustard blood, mm-hmm. yeah, because a lot of people who get uh attacked by the silver spheres. Well, there's the one, there's a priest character who's kind of peripheral to the plot. Yeah, what's his? He's he's having a big problem. He knows he's there. The tall man. The, he knows the tall man's there. Well, he just he's like confessing to God, like I can't put up with you know the things that I've seen. I can't do this anymore. Oh. So he stabs a corpse at a funeral. And the yeah. guy's wife is there. Why right. does he stab the corpse? Now that we're past it, does the corpse then bleed yellow? So right because just, okay. somehow the tall man is. Well, I guess it's established by the first movie. Is this one expanding on the the or clarifying what's happening? I feel like, yeah, I yeah. think so. I think it's saying that because like there's that line at the end of Phantasm where Mike's like, oh, they're like dwarfs because of the gravity, like crunches them down or whatever. Right. But this one, we're seeing that he actually like embalms them with like the yellow blood to put them in the planet, yeah. right? Maybe. To put them in the barrels. To put them in the barrels, which the go, barrels to the go to the planet. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, but he does smush them before they go to the planet. Yeah. Yes, Where that's how we get the slaves. dwarves. Yeah. Which I, I don't like that you see the dwarf faces in this one. Because the first one, they were just, they were like yeah. Jawas, basically. Yeah. And maybe that's why they did it, because they look like Jawas. Right. But... I kinda- I kind of liked it. Yeah, to separate them. This one, mm-hmm. they have rubber mask faces. Like, yeah. oh, yeah. Universal can't It felt say very that. leprechaun to me, and I, that's yeah. why I didn't like about it. <laughs> I, I bet you that is a, a stylistic mm-hmm. choice just to se- further separate themselves from, from the Star Wars. Right. Um, and also, I guess, in this, so the tall man is also back. Uh, Angus Scrim. A lot more. Yeah, yes. Than is he? in the first. Yeah, it's, it's a lot more I screen like time in the first a lot one. more in this one. Because I was sitting there going, like, he doesn't really have, like, a whole lot of screen time. Well. He's got a lot more in this one. Than the first one. Yeah, because in the first one, a lot of times it's, like, the Lady in Lavender and, like, you know, or, like, just him in the photograph. It's a lot of, like, little pieces to the puzzle before you really fully get. Like, I mean, you see him at the mortuary at the beginning picking up the casket and stuff, yeah. but it's just little scenes like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. In this one, he gets to deliver a line that I was, like, as we were sitting here watching, I'm, like, is this the one where he says, like, you when you die, you think you'll go to heaven. 
Yeah. Come, come to, to us. us. That was yeah. a good line. Was good. That was a good yeah. line. I like that line. I think that was in the trailer. Yeah. The the I remember the trailers, the ad campaign for this movie when I was a kid. I remember mm-hmm. the ball is back and be like, oh, what? Because I hadn't yep. seen the first one. I'm like, what the hell are they talking ball? about? Yeah. Um, so Angus Scrim is back doing the same mm-hmm. shtick that he did in the first movie. Uh, he has a screen presence. Uh, yes. That's like a, the big thing. He doesn't look like he's aged at all between these movies. Right. Because they got him his yeah. hair he cut looks, again. Yeah. I was going to say, remembering what he looked like in the first one, he kind of looks, he definitely has an age. Kind of looks a little younger. Yeah. Like, the makeup was, job is better or something. Maybe. Yeah. Oh, he's got mm-hmm. the purple lips and everything mm-hmm. like he's dead. <laughs> I thought it was interesting that they didn't bring back the lady in lavender like right. persona, but she I, comes back in the later ones. Oh, but it makes sense uh. that they didn't because Mike and them had all figured out that that was like his glamour. Yeah. So it makes sense that he would ditch it and do something else, right? And it was like right. a glamour was... aimed at like Jody, and right. uh, Tommy, and, right? Uh, there yeah. was cemetery sex in the first one. Yeah, yeah, there was. That's that how was it the started. Lady in lavender. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Which is the tall man in disguise, mm-hmm. right? In this one, I don't right. think he disguises himself as anybody because they're like, Universal is like, no, just be clear, damn it, what's right. going on? No, but yeah, we're we do... Universal. Monsters. Yeah. Yes. Singular monsters is what we need. And we do get like some puppets and stuff like that and mm-hmm. some yeah. gory some back. goo and things exploding out of people's faces and eyes exploding and yeah. stuff like that. It gets gross. Yeah. The little, the little like spine monster that comes out of Liz's back that looks like Angus Scrim. Yeah. <laughs> that was a good one. That <laughs> was I very like unexpected. Because that. that first movie did not have any body horror elements like not that like at all. That. No, yeah. no, not this like is me. Mark Showstrom, the mm-hmm. makeup effects guy. Uh, did From this beyond. One. Yeah, you can tell because there's that part where that tendril comes out of the tall man's forehead and that looked just like the what was the gland and yeah, the, the pineal gland. Yeah, and from oh, beyond, yeah, yeah, it was exactly like that. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. his head boner. Well, does yeah, this... they got bit off. Also, just like this movie got ripped off. It was the same thing. Damn. Gross trauma. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> does does the idea that there's some kind of alien insect living inside the tall man change your uh, your, your impression of the tall man? He's not really. Alien. No. No. You're because like... yeah, he's already taken other forms, you know. Yeah. So not really. Okay. I miss the little gags like in the first one there's that scene where Mike's at like that antique store and he looks at the photo of the tall man in the carriage yeah. and he turns and looks at him like I miss the little subtle things like that you yeah. know I know Isn't it's a sequel implied- you gotta do it bigger and better but I, I got from that sequence in the first one that like the tall man had been around forever. He's timeless. Yeah. Like Pennywise. Right. Because yeah. I think maybe Stephen King ripped that off you know from when he wrote uh, uh, it mm-hmm. but um this was, but 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 now we're saying that like the tall man has been actually going you know across the country town to town, drawing them up, enslaving, ensla- them. you know, taking mm-hmm. everybody you know basically to the cemetery and then off to his planet. So our heroes are on this road trip to try and uh, stop him. They do have uh, we are introduced to Horny Reggie. Was, <laughs> yes, which is a which running makes thing. Him ad- this is the Ash personality, right? You yeah. Know, to say, like, do we get is Reggie horny for the rest of this? Yeah. Oh, I'm oh. sure. Yeah. Yeah. There's always <laughs> Reggie involved in strange sex with some hot chick okay. that he picks up on. Uh, uh, I'm not I think, mad at it. <laughs> I mean, no. Yeah. Well, this one's uh, Samantha Phillips. Uh, mm-hmm. She was a penthouse uh, pet, I guess, not okay. playmate pet, mm-hmm. yep. and was also then on. I think she had a couple of TV series where she was the host of, and you know all this. Um, uh, was she a VJ? <laughs> uh, I'm not sure not, what but... show it was on HBO or something like that, but. Um, She's just weird. She her name is uh, Alchemy, is yes. right? In this is a hitchhiker that they pick up, and because <laughs> it's so, it feels so fucking hippy dippy. It's like it does. Hey, this is Alchemy. Yeah, picked her mm-hmm. up on the way over. No, they, yeah. she's always just Kemi. Yeah, yeah. From, yeah. For the rest of the movie, but at some point we do get like uh, clothed, semi clothed, uh, crazy rodeo sex with. Yeah, <laughs> she with was Reggie. a corpse at one point too, right? <laughs> Yeah, yeah she was. Yep. The, yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, Mike sees her as like a corpse in uh, an, er- an early mortuary. Yes. Which I is think. like, what the, we were talking about this when we were watching it, but this is one of my favorite tropes in movies is someone's just walking around a hospital or a building and all of a sudden they walk past a room that's all windows and it's the morgue. And you can just happen to see an embalming or a body on a table. Like, the morgues are just out in the open. Yep. You yeah, know? You and as we time. talked about it, that's in, Hall- Halloween Kills even <laughs> has a scene like that. Like, yes. it's... 
tale as old as time. You just turn a corner and boom, there's bodies in a morgue. Maybe well, they need it for like teaching purposes. Like everyone gather around so you can all look in as we embalm. Yeah, because they don't have that like you know the, the ceiling. Yeah, the it's all windows. Uh, open yeah. window yeah. Uh, ceiling yeah. for all the students to look in. Yeah, but this movie, this is one of the things I guess that I noticed about it. It's like it follows the process. Of, of what happens to a body after it goes to the morgue mm-hmm. uh, and to the uh, ultimately to the crematorium. Like we yes. see all the devices used for embalming, uh, used for uh, pulverizing uh, bones. You know, yeah. 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 Which uh, is just a meat tenderizer. All mm-hmm. the way down to like here it goes in the bag and this is to be delivered in an urn. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like. It's yep. like, wow, this is how we uh, we end up. That's what we do. <laughs> yeah. Bless those people who do it, man, because this does not seem like an easy job. So, But apparently Don Coscarelli says that a lot of people at conventions come up to him and tell him that because of his movies, they've gone into uh, work in embalming. Good. I'm sure we need a lot. I'm sure we actually need people for that. So that's good. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's a weird, way to start a career, but yeah. How did you get into doing this? Well, I saw you ever seen Phantasm. Phantasm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they're like, no, I've never heard of Phantasm because yeah. most people haven't. So. And then you just shove yeah. a silver ball into their head. Mm-hmm. And you're like, well, now you have. There you go. Yeah, yeah. it should be just playing on TVs and all <laughs> morgues all over the place, right? That's mm-hmm. the, the morgue movie, right? Mm-hmm. Well, there's also that night, and body bags. Yeah. And yeah. Night, night watch or whatever. Okay. Uh, oh, the and the autopsy of, of, autopsy Jane Doe. of Jane Doe. Yeah. Wait, uh, see, Colin, we could program a whole like all night horror thon of the movies at the morgue, morgue. you know? The mortuary. Yeah. What was it? The, the new thing with Clancy Brown, that uh, the anthology, the mortuary. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Tale, Academy. What the fuck was it? Anyway. Mm-hmm. Um, so the main. Like, but Mike also has a girlfriend, and this is the girl that he's psychically connected mm-hmm. to yes. somehow, Liz. And this wasn't supposed to be the fortune teller's daughter, was it? I wonder. Because they look similar. They have some like it. If they were going to do that, they should have made that more obvious. Was it rewritten? You think? I don't know. Like you couldn't get her either, and so like, okay, fine, we'll just come up with a new part. It's, it seems like the same character, you know. I don't really get like because she's not exposed to the events of the first movie, but she's dreamed of them, and yeah. so she's dreamed of them. And she's does beautiful of sketches of the, beautiful, all these events. Yeah, the drawings. Yeah. yeah, and she knows that the tall man is out there, and eventually her destiny leads her to the tall man, and mm-hmm. she's in love with Mike. Because she sees him in visions, and we find right. out he sees her in visions, and they meet up, and it's a meet cute, mm-hmm. and they're like, "I love you," like right off the bat. Mm-hmm. And they can talk to each other in their minds, and then they ultimately have a showdown with the tall man because she's captured, and he has to rescue her. What a love story! From the because uh, there was twice, right? Mm-hmm. The, she gets taped up, yeah, a couple times. There was, oh no, we found her. Well, she was almost going to be cremated. Right. Yes, and she got out of that. And then she was almost going to be embalmed yep. with the hydrochloric acid that Reggie had thought to put in the embalming fluid, which yes. is ultimately used to distor- destroy and dispatch the tall man. Which is very cool. Which is like that's I want someone to see someone melt from the inside. Mm-hmm. I like that. This Those are effects is works I want to see. Gross. There. Yeah. Like because he's because you know he's got uh, mustard blood, so he's just he's yellow. But uh, everything else about him is like pretty realistic except yeah the yellow yeah. mustard blood like and the this, tissue under the skin was really yeah, gross and his skin's getting like pulled off his yeah hands and it's stuff like, like that, that that the stuff that you used to see well i mean like in fright night or whatever like oh, yeah. when people would melt you know yeah. it's like mm-hmm. and i uh, you know because i noticed when the the priest gets the head drill thing the the mpaa cut obviously like yep. the long blood spurting uh, mm-hmm. out of the but with the tall man they did it because it's yellow and right. they're yeah. like yeah, yeah it's yellow it's not it doesn't look like blood so we yep. can do it yes yeah. So you get full on. Yeah, he gets his mm-hmm. own drill spike at the end of the sphere. They had Angus Grimm and some prosthetics and pull and like those like, uh, what's it called? Where you squeeze the little bladder. like, yeah, the bladder the and it bladder. comes out. Yeah, they yeah. had a lot of those on him and stuff. It looks great. And I did not expect that from a Phantasm movie. I liked it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they got rid of him at the end. It's like, it's over. Mm-hmm. They, they <laughs> blew him up. And they're all mm-hmm. like, we're happy that, that we got him. Mm-hmm. And then it turns out. They didn't, didn't get him. Didn't get him after all, because it's a phantasm movie. And you have to have the psych out. But I don't understand that because <laughs> does Sam, that make your movie pointless? Yeah. Well, does it? Okay. Uh, so this no. is the thing. Like now we hate these kind of like you know twist endings, and and well, you don't want to make it feel like nothing. You the hour and forty five minutes you just sat through meant nothing. Like, like antlers. 
Not yeah, gonna ruin the movie, yes, but, yeah. but yes. But yeah. you don't want to feel like, oh, everything I just watched is pointless. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you, you try not to do that, but with mm -hmm. endings like this, I mean, how do we feel about that? I don't know, because every Nightmare on Elm Street movie had like an ending that basically implied to you that Freddy Krueger is still single. alive. Right? right. But it yes. wasn't. Slide. As, mm -hmm. Aside from the first one, the first one has a bad ending. The original Nightmare on Elm Street. It's very bad. Yeah. And like, it, it just, that like mannequin going through that window, it just looks so terrible. Yeah. But it also implies that everything that Nancy went through was like, she's still dreaming and Freddie's still around. Right. It's like right. She didn't win. She didn't beat him after right. all. Right. The other ones, I think all the subsequent Nightmare on Elm Streets, for instance, like she, they do beat Freddie. But he still has a little bit of power to turn right. the lights on and model house or something like that. Mm -hmm. you right. Know? So it's like, ooh, he's probably going to be back. But this one has an ending that's like, I mean, it looks like they kill Reggie. Mm -hmm. Right. Right, because it turns out that uh, alchemy. Oh yeah, I forgot. We get back because alchemy was told to just like just go. We'll find you. Go a hundred mm -hmm. miles, and then she, her car breaks down. She finds a hearse, takes that, which is. It's weird. I don't know if it was planned or not, because she drives the hearse, picks them up after they set the whole place on fire, and then it's revealed uh, to Horny Reggie that she is possessed. She is the... She's something. Is she... The, but is the implication at the end of this movie that she's the, she tall, man's the tall man? Yeah, he, yeah, I think so. And like the way it's revealed is she pulls a piece of her scalp off by her hair, and it's gross. Mm, it's like... Uh, it caught me like off guard. I was like not expecting it. It's like in The Faculty, where, where she starts melting in the shower, and... Yeah. She's like playing with her hair, and mm -hmm. all the yeah. side of her head comes off. He's like, oh, and then we just get Reggie, like, plastered up against the windows, going, oh, God, and he's all bloody. Yep dumped and the car takes off and then apparently alchemy does become the tall man yep. mm -hmm. and this leaves uh um my heroes mike liz. and liz in the back of the hearse and like yeah because the yeah wait didn't the first one end like that or the first one had this exact scene the f in the bedroom oh. No, but it had it in the car the thing, with the um the car flipped over. The there psychic was that woman's accident. wasn't there like somebody like reached in through the car while it was moving and pulled people out of it. Was this in the first it, movie? It, it flipped doors? over. Oh, okay. It flipped, but the movie ends yeah with him coming through the mirror in Mike's right, bedroom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So apparently, our heroes have been abducted. Reggie's out of commission. Mm -hmm. Is uh, he though? I have not seen any other alive. movies, but I assume he's. Back in some capacity. Yeah, they're all. Yeah. yeah, everybody's back. Even the Hemikuda, I, I believe. Uh, yeah, how's the Hemikuda? Can they just find another Hemikuda? No, I can't remember. I know there's a Hemi. Yeah, he drives the Hemikuda. Mm -hmm. But I now it, I don't. It's remember like the how. Evil Dead car can survive anything. That's apparently, yeah. for all we know, they may just pick up randomly in the next movie. Which, <laughs> yeah, and they're just like, yeah, we, we kind of toy with the ending of how you know. The the last one ended and we'll just start and the, the car is right. still fine. It, it is interesting that he didn't do something more final considering he didn't even want to make a second one. Yeah, I don't you think know? he knew there was going to be a third one. Right. It was just like, this was yeah. your second movie and boom, here you go. Because this was not financially successful. No. So, especially not compared to the first one. No, because again, I don't know, you know, I mean, I suppose that's what they were going off of, mm -hmm. that there was this large contingent of people. But 10 right. years later... You know, yeah. Or are those people? <laughs> exactly. You know. Yeah. Do they still have disposable income? Do they still think fondly of this movie that they saw ten years ago? Yeah. Wow. You know? That seems like a risk. Like mm -hmm. I can't wait to see another Phantasm movie. I mean, I guess you have the horror uh, fandom. You mm -hmm. know, would still turn out for it, and they did, but there's not enough of them. And Phantasm was relatively obscure to me. I remember as a kid, like I said, I didn't know it. I knew Jason, Freddy, Michael Myers, and those guys. But didn't know. Um, and I, I, to be honest, the, I didn't even really know the Texas Chainsaw Massacre mm -hmm. during that period of time right, until yeah. um, Texas Chainsaw Two came out. And I was like, "Oh, what? What is this Texas Chainsaw Massacre?" Yeah, I always remember the silver balls, and I remember hearing Phantasm for the longest time, but I don't remember. Well, it has a really good theme too, so I feel like everybody's heard the theme song, but never necessarily seen the movie. You know, yeah. I hadn't even back then. Yeah, and then I saw the movie; it was on TV and edited to hell and incomprehensible. And I so bet. I was like, yeah. <laughs> oh no! And the edited for TV version of Phantasm. Yeah. Well, I'm sure Jesus. the whole cold open is cut out because there's nudity in that, so you probably don't even get the context for Tommy dying. You're no, just like, oh, was, what? A guy there. I don't know is dead. It it was there, but it was so choppy that yeah. it didn't, like, you're like, what in the fuck? Well, I guess I got the idea there was a guy in a graveyard 
having sex with a woman who had a knife and she killed him. Mm-hmm. And then she turned into, you know, but then you're like, what? Who's this? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> mm-hmm. Who's this yeah. old man? Yeah. Bring back the blonde. Yeah. Um, I well, I it. guess. Do we, yeah, do we have any stray observations about this movie? Any scenes that you had? Any questions that you're... Cinematography was really good, I thought. It was, it was fun. really good. I like, know there's, uh, like we said, there was an influence from, you know, uh, Evil Dead 2 mm-hmm. and stuff like that. But it was fun. But I really liked the scene when they were in the hotel room and they opened the blinds and through the hotel room window you see the Cuda like on the edge of kind of like a cliff looking over like yeah. the California mountains. And then they're having a conversation and they walk out of frame and come back in the frame on the other side of the window and get in the car and have the whole conversation while they drive off. Yeah, that, that was, was really good. nice. That was either good direction, staging or mm-hmm. cinematography. That was, yeah. And I'm like, did they build like a three wall set? <laughs> right, yeah. right, you know, Just so they could get it. that shot. It yeah. felt like it. I'm like, that's not really indoors. And the right. big, like, almost aerial shots of the car driving on the California highway and through the mountains and stuff was really yeah. nice. I like really yeah. liked that. Maybe you're right because I had a bad impression of the visual style of it. That is maybe not the cinematography that I probably. It might be production design. It's it felt yeah. cheap. Some of the the sets were like. Oh, really? This is what you want with a big room, like, like the doctor's right. office, you know, mm-hmm. or like the basements in some of these places. They were just like, I don't know, you know. Mm-hmm. But that felt like that scene with them in the hotel room. I was like, wait, did we just like skip over into like my own private Idaho or something? It felt like we jumped into an art house movie for just like a scene. It did. Well, I think it, for a little bit longer because there's a lot of narration from Reggie in this. Where yeah. He's very like, it seems like he's very reflective. He's very calm. It's just like he's writing in his journal. It's like. Day 35. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We've mm-hmm. been on the road. We're running low on supplies. I wonder if that's like also that. like a holdover from Dune. That yeah. you hear the characters yeah. that's talking. That's true. Yeah. I don't know. I'm going to make a fake Criterion cover for this movie. Because I feel like you can do it pretty easily. Ooh, do that. I'm curious. <laughs> yeah. yeah. For Phantasm 2. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess uh, that means we should go around the table and tell people what Do what we said earlier. Late. Two balls. Yeah. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> Phantasm. Or, yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. And just the mustard finger. And just, yeah. It's oh, no, it had to be the, two the fingers. Pin. It had to be two fingers. Two mustard fingers yeah. works for me. It, it, it's too bad this uh, didn't have a subtitle in this, like <laughs> Phantasm 2 something, because then you could put the colon, and those could be the two balls. And I've taken yeah, the why was Yeah, how was there not like a two balls <laughs> pun in this title or something? I mean, the you ball know? was bad. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Maybe they got more creative down the road. One day nah. we'll find out. What's the next one? The Lord of the Dead and yeah. then yeah. Phantasm Four: Oblivion and then right. Phantasm Those are Five very Rabbit. generic subtitles. Yeah. Yeah. It's not but, like they could be Resident Evil movies. But Michaela, now that you've gone this far and, you know, peeled back the onion and seen the second <laughs> one, I mean, now do you feel compelled to go? Don't answer that. <laughs> Wait until after we read some of our listener mail. All right. <laughs> so in order to help us with this task, we're going to have to summon our mailman. And his name is Igor. Bring us the mail. Masters, masters, the mail. I've got the mail. So many letters. Our followers are rising, rising. Why, thank you, Igor. Thank you, Igor. He's very. Well. Do, you, do you think he's like crunched down dwarf from the weight of that planet? Do you Grimmie think he's nice. been to the Phantasm planet? Oh, yeah. I yeah, think yeah. it's that and just a combination of like he's slowly melting over the years. You know, people get shorter when they yeah. get older. Yeah. I mean, he's old. So he's That's just. True. Yeah. And he had like a familial like recognition when he saw the dwarfs. Now that he can actually see their face. Like, mm-hmm. oh, right. Yeah. Mom and dad. Mm-hmm. This is yeah, right. He has yellow blood, right? Oh, absolutely. Oh, guaranteed. Yeah, yeah. Acid yeah. blood. I'm, I'm <laughs> assuming. All right, well, we want to let you know how you can participate in this interactive portion of our show. All you got to do is go over to uh, our Facebook. Facebook.com slash Saturday Night Freak Show. Twitter. At Sat Freak Show. You can email us. Saturday Night Freak, Saturday Night Freak Show at Yahoo.com. Or you can follow along on Instagram at Saturday Night Freak Show. Leave us a question or a comment. We'll read it on the air. About tonight's movie, Phantasm 2, Michael Whitaker says, Oh, man, I just tried watching this recently, too. I definitely didn't like this as much as the first one or the third one, which is probably controversial to say, but I really enjoy the third one. I was more shocked at the notion that Reggie had a family than I was with the Mike recast, but that was also definitely a distraction that made it harder to like this movie. It is an adjustment. The time jump and this is someone else, it is a, an adjustment. Especially since they go back to Mike, uh, right. Mike uh, again. Uh, Travis Legler says, this is a solid way to start Listener's Choice Month. A good, fun sequel, so I'm sure Sean's pants are getting a little tight with it. 
Wow. If memory serves, the gore is up a bit, but the atmosphere is still on course with the first film. I'm excited to hear your guys' thoughts. You keep your thoughts off my <laughs> <laughs> Sir. I know. It's Respectfully, like, sir. But Sean is the sequel guy. You How are come the he sequel didn't guy. bring you uh... developed that reputation? <laughs> oh, that's right. Uh, Lee Jordan says, classic. I love Phantasm and Phantasm 2. The others start off or start to go off a bit, but are okay. I like how many Phantasm fans we have in our listenership. <laughs> well, yeah. Makes you feel at home. Here we are. We're, we're watching <laughs> Phantasm 2. Simon mm-hmm. Carter says, yes, there's some genuinely creepy stuff in this movie. And it did an awesome job expanding the story without shitting on what was so good about number one. Actually, Don Coscarelli, I think, uh, said uh, that the second one, when all the critical reviews came in and said it was so horrible, he's like, well, basically, we made the first one a cult classic now. Yeah, the first one exactly. Yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, he can't really hurt his legacy at this point, right? No, you know? right. So made the first uh, Phantasma classic. Uh, Adam Kaler says, this is just a fun series to watch. The tall man is an intimidating villain, and I hope Angus Scrim had a good time bringing him to life. I believe if you watch this film, it makes you qualified for a job in the mortuary sciences if you can ever find your way out of one. Mortuary? Yeah. I mean, we did see what they put hydraulic acid and in the embalming fluid right yeah the hydrochloric yeah 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 yeah, yeah. 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 so you don't have that do that around. i guess yeah, yeah. so yeah. i know not to do that. yeah yeah <laughs> so we are learning that. something and no mustard blood in people right right yeah, yeah. also bad all right yeah. yeah i feel confident i can do this <laughs> uh nick siebel writes in and says this has got a great movie concept two bros go on the road loaded with badass weapons and a badass hot rod to fight an evil bad guy with dwarves who terrorizes funeral homes with flying chrome spe- flying chrome spheres with a drill and spikes fuck yeah you can't beat the 80s did you know brad pitt auditioned and almost got the role of michael all that should be on the back of the <laughs> yeah. on, in the corner of the poster it's right there i need someone who's good at deep fakes to do like a deep fake <laughs> edit of brad pitt into phantasm there you too. go and then yeah. Yeah. to show brad pitt somehow and we can get like the reface app yeah. so, somebody from yeah. fantasm somebody two has to apps, upload yeah, some of their stuff saying, you know, we can figure it out uh g money says this entry in the series is the easiest to watch i love the original and that film stands best on its own while part two and three are viewed best viewed as a marathon like when they would play on usa two has great gore and the back pimple creature is as memorable as quattro and (laughs) malignant yeah 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 I would agree. I, I, I didn't like, there's just no reason to expect that in this movie. So when it happened, I was like, wait, what, what yeah. is happening right now? Yeah. I wish there was more of that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That would been good. Uh, the previous week we watched a movie called, uh, or two weeks ago, we watched night train to terror. Tony Bradshaw says, I just watched this claiming that it was edited is like someone saying they <laughs> mowed your lawn using a sledgehammer. I enjoyed <laughs> it because the scene segues were much like looking through a kaleidoscope pointed at the sun. <laughs> <laughs> and that music was not music. That was music. So that was Everybody's authentic. got something to do. Everybody, Everybody but, but you. you. That was authentic. Yeah. Uh, uh, Todd writes in and says... Just, Just Todd? Todd. <laughs> Just Todd. <laughs> okay. Writes in and says, don't forget Richard Mall was also in The Sword and the Sorcerer in 1982, which oh. I saw entirely too young and is forever in my nightmares. Interesting. Yeah. Well, we didn't include him because uh, we were we were saying he's on the Saturday Night Freak Show Wall of Fame for appearances in the three movies yeah. or four. Mm-hmm. Previous movie. mentioned. Oh, yeah. He's been yeah. four. Uh, Mark Harrison about Night Train to Terror says, that was a lot to take in and I don't think I can follow. Uh, oh, you know what? You're in good company because that's how I felt watching it too. Yeah, I was like, "Wow, this is a lot." I don't think I can follow, but dive deeper. I'm here. I Go d- further. I don't know if he watch if, if he saw the movie or just listening to us. I'm sure. <laughs> well, I feel like if you're just listening to us, it's insane. I'm yeah. sure. This is four people like having a seizure. A collective um, seizure, though. Yeah, that, was, that was a different movie we watched. We were just like, I feel like I'm nuts talking right now. <laughs> May have been society. Yeah. I'm just like, I don't know what's going on. Yeah, very very crazy movie. Uh. The week before that, we watched Star Wars, the holiday special. No, that's right. <laughs> Brett Williams writes in and says, Sea Huds was Just. not the only one to see the holiday special as it aired. Having seen Star Wars in a theater the summer before, I was nine and watching it in anticipation of the new unnamed bounty hunter making his appearance here before showing up in the upcoming sequel. The free mail order figure the next year would finally reveal his name as Boba Fett. Oh, I love that. I love history. hearing 
where people were when cultural moments happened. I love that. Right. I love that we have at least two listeners that were yeah we're there we're, and at, saw, we're boots yeah. on the ground yeah. 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 apparently getting like little Boba Fett Mego dolls and shit yeah. like sent to them in the yeah, mail I do remember that like I did a the lot of that with like figures? Yeah. yeah with like GI Joe maybe I did like mm-hmm. there would be ones that you could only get in the mail like you have to save up enough like box tops or whatever mm-hmm. or back of the whatever <laughs> uh, Brett back also sent this. us uh, photos of the prototype never produced uh, Chewbacca family figures oh <gasps> So How much do those go for? Is it is it too too much? Oh, <laughs> well, I, unless you but, can find these. Well, yeah, you can find prototypes sometimes. But uh, Grant Parish. Okay, so we uh, we had posted on our social media that uh, Harvey Corman and uh, B. Arthur in the movie and part of the, the Star Wars universe. Mm. Grant Parish said, "Don't don't do this. Don't align <laughs> these two in that way." And he says, "Quote." Once upon a time in a holiday special that should have been aborted at the idea stage, two titans of their craft were conned into appearing in a shit show by lights and magic so industrial the world wouldn't put it out twice. This is there. I fixed it. Lights and magic so industrial. <laughs> you know, I've applied like for it. jobs there like four times and never been hired. So I have it out for ILM. Um, Kryptonian Orphan says, I still prefer Lumpy over Jar Jar Binks. Yeah, that's a bold that's, statement. Oh, I'll take Lumpy. <laughs> wow. And Ryan Handsome Jansen says the wife and I tried watching this last night. We lasted about thirty minutes and just couldn't do it. Yeah, you. That's fair. It's, yeah, you, it's not a sit down and watch it movie or show. Oh, or, once people realize how long the acrobats that Lumpy's watching goes on for, that's when they're like, "We have to get out now." Right. We got to do something else. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You have to. Yeah. You can't just sit and stare at this. It's like uh, we did. It's like looking at <laughs> we did. We had to. We couldn't turn it off. It was like <laughs> Clockwork Orange kind of shit. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Michaela came in here and put those devices yep. on her yep. eyes. Her eyes and yep. Yep. Yeah. I didn't need them though because I could watch them. <laughs> no, because she them. watches yeah. it every year. And probably watched it again. No, year. no, because my partner was like, "So since you just watched it, right. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't leverage that." Out. Yeah, he was like, "Do you?" Just want to watch a new hope instead, and I compromise and watch a new hope instead. So. Well, all right, there you yeah, go. and then so. you put in your special tape of New Hope, and then five minutes well, later, it just cuts to the Christmas special. <laughs> we like, watch, ah, you're not getting away. We watched the like most recent version of a new hope, so with all those terrible edits in it. So, I mean, it was like a good compromise then because you have the McClunky in there and all the other stuff that is just <laughs> is unnecessary. This what, Disney, Disney Plus, Plus we oh, watched, okay. which I is a seen, like, horrible version. Another version. Yeah. How many versions of an, of Star Wars and New Hope do we have? Oh, there's got to be like seven or eight, probably. Have you guys watched yeah. the despecialized version? At some, some, I mean, I have the VHS tapes with the a, original version. Yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Where you can actually see what the movie looked like. Right. I have a yeah. Yeah, version of that. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, now well, we're going to go around the table and tell you whether or not you should see the Star Wars spinoff. Well, there's a connection. There's Jawas. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Phantasm 2, starting with me. I'm going to go first tonight and say for Phantasm 2, as I am Sean of sequels, uh, I like this movie. Um, I like, I think I liked it because of, uh, well, all the influences of other horror movies of that decade uh, that I can see uh, in this movie. Um, it is, it's a fun movie. Um, it is kind of a, it's a road movie. It doesn't really, I like the story because we get, we're introduced to everybody in the first one. I like that it's the idea of him going from town to town, collecting souls and slave and all that stuff. Um, it does feel like we do kind of repeat some scenes from this. I mean, we are in mausoleums and the balls are just, you know, diving into people's heads and squirting all their blood out. So some of it feels like a little bit of a retread, which is, you know, which is fine. Um, but I mean, you know, I'm curious to watch the third one. Whoever said in their review that you should watch the second and third one as like a marathon. Like, I kind of want to watch the third one. I don't know if it's bad or not. Well, um, then you got to watch the fourth one. Ah, uh, and then it's a slippery see, slope. I know. We'll see. This is why like, <laughs> but this is my, I'll get my like, Oh, I want to watch him. And then it's just gonna be like, I didn't watch him. So I'm, I'm, I'm fine with that. Um, but I had fun with this movie tonight. Uh, yeah. Well, all the other ones are on shutter. Are they? Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Cause he did the, he did the yeah. thing. Um, it's not, I mean, it's not gonna be my favorite. It's, it's good enough. I recommend it. Um, yeah, I had fun. For all the reasons we said tonight. It's not going to blow you away, but it's, you know, it's good enough. It's fun hanging out with Reggie for an hour and a half. And 
I am curious about the other ones. So I'm going to recommend Phantasm <laughs> 2. Uh, it uh, expanded enough, had enough of the familiar elements, so it was good. Colin, what did you think of Phantasm 2? Well, I was actually surprised this time around because I seriously went into this movie going, like, I'm not going to recommend this. I don't <laughs> like Phantasm 2. Ironically, I do like Phantasm 3 and 4, I think, better than this. But this time watching it, I had a different experience. And I don't know if I was paying more attention somehow or it made more sense or I've watched enough Phantasms recently to properly put this in context. Um, it is more... I don't know. I, I mean, I guess you'd say linear then. Yes. It feels more it's a good word for it. feels more linear or um, what would be That's like another else. word for it? I mean, it's hard. OK, so I'm going to say conventional sequel, mm -hmm. yep. even though we're still talking about Phantasm and it's just weird to begin with. Right. Um, I thought the dialogue was clunky. I thought the direction was not all that great. I mean, it feels like someone who's. You know, they got a chance to make a movie, but it doesn't feel like his heart's really in it. He's just it, it, not compared to that first one. No. Yeah, yeah. To compensate, he's just, you know, cranking the dial up. He's Explosions. Like, yeah. If yeah. I've got this, right. then we're going to go. Explosions, more spheres. Yeah, yeah. Heavy artillery, you know, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the, the canvas is bigger. So it's like, OK, but some of the characters. They're crawling around, creeping and crawling around mausoleums. I'm like, I don't know who this priest is. I don't know who this girl yeah. is. I don't know who the other girl is. I really don't know anything about like Mike and Reggie other than they're familiar they're from yeah. the first movie and they have mm -hmm. a history that I know them from there. But even when they talk to each other, they're just talking about like, okay, man, you ready? We're going to go, go get him today. Ass. Let's yeah, go yeah. kick his Yeah. And then like the music starts, they get in the car and, you know, apparently we're doing this for like six months. Isn't that what yeah. you said at some point? Like, I, six yeah. months ago. In the course of this movie, it covers six months mm -hmm. uh, yeah. because we're eight years past the first yeah. one when this, oh, yeah. Yeah. and then in the, over the course of six months. Um, however, it did rally uh, for the the climax. I was like, by the time we actually got to the mortuary for the big final showdown with the tall man and all that stuff, that was when it was like, okay, the movie started rolling out all the special effects. The you know we got to rescue somebody from a contraption. Yeah. Uh, other people are getting, you know, crazy things happening to them. We're going to, you know, seeing the, we're going through the tuning fork again and all this other stuff. I think Sean, you're right. I mean, you're restaging a lot of stuff from the first one because um, you're trying to introduce an audience who may, you know, it's eight years or nine years. I right. think, you know, if you haven't seen the first one and this is your first phantasm, it's kind of like a soft a remake. Release. Yeah. It's like, yeah. It's, yeah. So it's reintroducing you to, you know, what all this stuff is. But for the core fandom, I don't know if it expanded. I guess in retro, he's, they, they basically are saying flat out what was either implied yes. or kind of given away by the end of the first movie. Mm -hmm. Now we're just like telling you that's what's going on. Yes. Um, but I did, I guess I, in, I went through, I think there was a, a, a period in the middle where i was like this movie's like aimless it's bringing in characters <laughs> i don't care about like you know the, the, this whole subplot with the priest being stalked at his house by the reanimated corpse of the guy that he stabbed at the right. and then he shows it lost up. me a little there too yeah because there was like a whole thing with that guy like going after like the grandmother yeah and mm -hmm. then, and then like, it goes away i'm like yeah where's this going but it did pay off because grandmother showed up as a as, as a dwarf a, as a dwarf later so it's like okay they were still eye on the prize weaving it in but there was like are these scenes leading to like a confrontation like the, the, the climax and then eventually once it got rid of those extraneous scenes that it started going and i'm like okay you know this is doing the thing that i like about phantasm so i think yeah if you like the original phantasm so there you go if you don't then stay this, away yeah then this ain't gonna help you don't like this yeah but if you like the first one i think you will find things to like here and then yeah i would say you gotta you gotta keep going because if you like this i mean then you see Phantasm 3, <laughs> Phantasm 4, and probably even Ravager, even though I don't think that one ends. Even though now <laughs> Angus Scrim is it's dead, so you yeah. can't do yeah. any more of them. But uh, all right, Michaela, let's have Here's it. the big one, yeah. yeah. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I was a little nervous when I heard <laughs> that this got picked for Listener's Choice Month because I was felt a little bit of pressure because of how much I like the original one. 
But uh, to borrow a phrase from the We Hate Movies podcast, like when they did Gremlins 1 and Gremlins 2, they said, Gremlins is a really good steak and Gremlins 2 is a really good burger. And that's how I feel about Phantasm 1 and 2. Phantasm is a really good steak. Phantasm 2 is a really good burger. Both great, but different levels of taste, right? Um, Still lots of fire. Yeah. and like, yeah, <laughs> It's all flame broiled, you know? Yeah, yeah. All flame broiled. <laughs> yeah. yep. um, I, I was surprised by how much I like this. I do feel like Colin, I agree, it dragged a little bit with some C-level plots that didn't need to be there. <laughs> but never going to be mad at seeing Phantasm made with a bigger budget. You know, that's really cool and probably will that's i'm sure the budget just went down from yep. here yeah. you know <laughs> yeah so yeah. um i love the cinematography uh don't really care for the mic recasting but i understand that like a studio wants to make sure a name is attached or at least a face if not a name um so i get it but james legro didn't really do anything for me in this but it, it, man it's fun to think about the brad pitt version of this movie right <laughs> you know uh, I mean, it's super gory, which the first one is not. The first one's mostly about score and suspense and unraveling the mystery. But I liked that it was gory. I liked that Angus Scrim got a lot more to do in this one. Everyone got a lot more to do in this one, really. Uh, I think you got to see it. Like, it's I don't like I said it's it's the nice it's a nice follow up to that first movie. It's not the same. The tone is different, but the score is similar, and at least it's Don still making it. How often yeah. do we get a one two sequel, same writer and director? It doesn't happen very much. It feels like so. I'm glad that he gets control over his vision throughout basically the entire franchise. Yeah, I am disappointed he didn't do. You know, it's like yeah, what, what, why yeah, not? So what were busy, you doing? You couldn't right. do. Yeah. I mean, maybe John dies at the end when he was shooting at that time. I don't know. That's well, all I can figure. Done, he'd already done it. Uh, maybe they found the line where he was just like, I'm not doing it. Yeah. yeah maybe. Yeah. He's just like, I'm retired. Yeah. You know? yeah. But I mean, it's phantasm. It feels right. like you that have is his obligation. Baby. Yeah. Yeah. That should tell you how how far they went in the fifth one in Ravager. Yeah. yeah I'm a little this. curious about three and four because just because I don't know anything about them other than like Reggie continues to be a central figure. But I'm a little curious. We'll see if I work up. The ad- <laughs> adventurous nature to explore them any further but i mean it was cool it was cool to revisit these characters and stuff and see the flashbacks and see how it connects i love a movie that picks up the second after the last movie most of the time um we could have used a, a a good song though a good guitar okay yeah, this is yeah. this is my thing this. with this movie so it's phantasm 2 why is it not phantasm dose Eckies, and you get Dos Eckies to sponsor <laughs> it because they were so heavily <laughs> featured in that first movie. Like, if you've got the universal money and the budget, why is Dos Eckies not all over this movie? There you go. No, sitting here at midnight song, like you know, <laughs> yeah, Universal. I mean, they could have yeah. got this whole thing. That's yeah, cool. they could have done a whole Phantasm soundtrack. Missed oh, opportunity oh, oh. with the music. Well, this might be like <laughs> a reason to go further yeah. because uh, you know those outtakes. Mm-hmm. You do get another duet between. <gasps> Uh, a different song? I think so. Oh, or it's a yeah. longer version of there is, there is, the, there is a full version of Sitting Here at Midnight. Maybe it's a full version yeah. of Sitting Here at oh, Midnight. I can't remember. Yeah. yeah, I have the Waxwork Record soundtrack for Phantasm, and they have the full version of Sitting Here at Midnight yeah. on it, yeah. I know we go All back right. to yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. So. so, yeah, I recommend it. Okay, well, that's right. three uh, three recommends for Phantasm 2. Yeah. Our first movie of listener request month. Good so start. It turns out, out of the hundreds of movies that uh, were uh, uh, you know put out there, our listeners really like John Carpenter. Uh, uh, all we, right. I mean, like, how many John Carpenter hey, movies man, have it, we done? I was gonna say, can we guess this? Mm. Yeah, because we've done so many at this point. I'm gonna say the Ward. I'm gonna say the Thing. Okay, so the irony is that phantasm outscored the thing by one point oh wow <laughs> our fans really like phantasm but wow. phantasm was outscored <laughs> by one point or one vote uh-huh. by prince of darkness oh all right so i've never doing, seen this we're doing john carpenter's prince of darkness mm-hmm. okay so you, the, the thing just missed it we, oh, we were almost doing the so thing close. and prince of darkness back to back damn but, uh, prince of darkness next week okay i'm glad we all didn't right. uh, yeah you've never seen it no i've never okay. seen it i only saw it i think last year or the year before yeah i'm surprised that we haven't done it before yeah. to be honest with you i'm like we can't do that we did it already I know we I'm haven't. shocked. Oh. <laughs> no, because we had a thing. You and I had a long discussion about it, and I borrowed it from you and watched it, and we talked about it. So I think mm-hmm. that covered our, our right. thought you, of like, think that we oh, did I it? thought we did it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Gotcha. All right. So okay. now we're going to officially do 
Prince of John Carpenter's Prince of Darkness. Donald Pleasance okay. is in this, right? Yes, yes. he is. All right. Yep. Well, I, I'm already excited then. Okay. So. Well, all right. That's next week. <laughs> and I remember we, this movie. <laughs> we hope you'll join us. And until then, ladies and germs, the basement is going dark.